Hey yo, what's going on? Welcome back to the Mellow Podcast. This is your boy, CJ Mellow. We are back with another one. In this week's episode, we are going to be talking about spoilers all ahead, spoilers deep, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Let me tell y'all, if you have not seen this movie, first, if you haven't seen the first one, definitely go see the first one, because the first one's dope. But if you're not seen, if you've seen the first one and you still haven't seen this movie, go check this movie out, okay? Like, I'm not, it's it's not even a joke how phenomenal this movie is. Like, Marvel is now hitting DC type level of animation, I feel like now. It's ridiculous how good this movie is. So many cuts. Let's put it this way Across the Spider Verse, meshed together. Every single Spider-Man movie that since Tobey Maguire, even the animated TV shows they've added to this movie. Like, are you serious right now? Now, if you have not seen Across the Sp- Into the Spider Verse, um, I'm gonna do a quick breakdown of Into the Spider Verse and just hop into Across the Spider Verse. Um, into the Spider Verse, it's about Miles Morales, uh, Afro Latino kid, black and Puerto Rican. You know, he's he's a teenager, you know what I mean? He, he's very smart, but yet he just wants to do his own thing, do his own style and stuff like that. He's very into graffiti and stuff like that. And basically, in the start of the movie, it cuts to... I'm trying to remember exactly the start of the movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, we get, like, the whole... Com- First thing, graphically, animation-wise, these two movies are phenomenal. And when I mean phenomenal, I mean phenomenal. It looks just like you're just ripping through a page of a comic book. It's great. Basically, Into the Spider-Verse is basically Miles becomes the new Spider-Man by, and I'll kind of kind of connect it with the Across the Spider-Verse by accident, supposedly. But in this sense, there's only supposed to be one Spider-Man in each universe. From you know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna go into Across the Spider-Verse. I feel like I'm about to go back and forth between these movies. So in the second movie, Bessie's Miles is kind of like sad because like he feels he's not really cool. Nobody understands him except the, all the Spider people from the first one, like Spider Noir, Spider Gwen, um, Peter B. Spider, Spider Ham. I forgot the girls, the young Asian girl's name in the Spider in the first one. Um, but all those people, Aunt May and stuff like that. But in this one, he feels that like he's left alone because Aunt May supposedly moved away. They tell us right off the rip in the movie. Um, none of this. No, there's no spider. You don't see no spider noir, no spider ham, no. Um, the, again, the little Asian girl with the spider robot. You don't see her at all in the beginning. Almost, I feel it takes almost, I want to say about an 45 minutes to an hour before we start seeing some characters that you might recognize. And then, she's like, How am I blanking out right now? Like, I literally just saw this movie. I'm gonna have to see it again now, all of a sudden. But like I said, Miles is sad. He he doesn't have a fa- he doesn't feel like he has a he has a family, but not the way he wants in a way to have a family in the sense of friends. He just wants friend like a friendly family. That makes no sense. Whatever. Um, I'm so lost. I'm, I just woke up. Um, but yeah, essentially, Miles tries to find friends in ways he doesn't find it. He misses his uncle Aaron. Um, basically, it's just spoiler heavy. Let's just put that. It's spoiler heavy. From the jump, you get you go Spider Gwen. We mainly get Spider Gwen's story in the beginning of this movie because that's how it, in, it introduces um, Miguel O'Hara, which is Spider Man twenty ninety nine, and it introduces Jessica Drew, which is a uh, Spider Woman. It's kind of funny because when like, and you get we get like almost a picture sense of what's his name on um, the Vulture. Like, literally, he looks like he's ripped out of a Renaissance drawing. It The way they add this animation to this movie is bananas. I mean, legitimately bananas. In fact, they almost added like 800 different, I feel, 800 different animation styles in this movie. But in the sense, it starts with Gwen telling her story how... Her Peter died, essentially, and her Peter wasn't even Spider-Man. 
Harpita was like a kid that was being bullied, and she was in a way protecting him, but they were best friends. And then Peter, I forgot what he does. He injects himself with something, and he becomes, um, oh my god, what, what does that guy become? The lizard. He becomes the lizard in this movie, but essentially, and essentially, um, Gwen does not know that, and she tries to fight him off until she realizes who he is after like the the dose wears off. She's like, "Oh my God, Peter, what's? I didn't know, I didn't know." And he, Peter was basically like, "I just want to be like you." And she's like, "Oh my God!" But in this sense, her f- almost like what happens with uh, Miles in the first movie. Uh, Miles' father sees Miles over. The Prowler, which is Uncle Aaron, Miles' uncle. But in this case, it's um, Gwen is over Peter, her Peter's body, and her father comes in. And they'll be like, you killed him. Oh, Spider-Man, Spider, I don't know if they even called her Spider-Woman or Spider-Person in this movie. Um, ki- he killed it, and her father's sole mission was to find the Spider-Person, which is her, to find to later find out that Spider Woman is her daughter, is his daughter, and he's literally like, You're under arrest. You are under arrest. And she's like, But dad, let me explain. I did not kill him. And he, he just felt like it's his job. He needs to do his job. But like at least later on in the movie, things happen. And she basically comes back home after something else happens, which I'll go back to. And then she realizes that her father quit being a cop because he couldn't arrest his daughter. He couldn't do his job knowing that his daughter was the spider spider Gwen and he couldn't arrest her essentially. And this whole movie also ends on a cliffhanger. There are no uh, post or mid credit scenes in this movie, so cut that off. But after the whole like uh spider her dad trying to arrest her earlier in the movie, almost the beginning of the movie. Up uh, in comes in Miguel and uh, Jessica Drew to come, well first Miguel because he couldn't they couldn't beat the Vulture, so then Miguel's like he has like an AI on his wrist like a time traveling AI. And she's like, do you want me to call for help? He's like, no. Do you sure you don't want me to call me for? And they're like, yeah, call for help. And then next thing you know, you see freaking Spider-Woman, Jessica Drew, come in with her motorcycle. It's, and stuff like that. And basically helps bring down the vulture. And I like the little scene when they have with Jessica Drew and um, Gwen. When Gwen's like, uh, what's up with that situation? And she was, and basically Jessica Drew's pregnant in this movie. And Jessica Drew's like, oh, this right here? Oh, it's a boy. Or I think she says, I hope it's a boy. And stuff like that. But it's cool. Like, it's, she does, it's like she's Spider-Woman without no, like, thinking about it and stuff like that, which I think is awesome and cool. And Jessica Drew is kind of biting for Spider-Gwen to come with them in their time reality saving trope, I guess they're having, troop they're having. Because Jessica Drew felt like Spider-Gwen had nobody with her. Because her dad basically said, no, I need to arrest you because you're Spider-Gwen and stuff like that. But she was like, ugh. So they trapped her father in like a little, I don't know what you call it, a little dome thing. And then Miguel those toss her like a time machine wristlet. And he's like, well, welcome to the team kind of thing. And then you jump into Miles and all that stuff. Basically like missing all his friends and stuff like that. Going to class and things like that. I feel like I'm almost reminiscing the first movie and stuff like that. Yo, eat your machine. I'm itchy. Um... But it's definitely about how Miles growing up, his parents not want to give up on him growing up. And in a way, his father kind of realizing that, you know, Spider-Man is needed. So he, he like, he's not as much going after Spider-Man like he was in like towards the end of the first movie. Or towards the middle-ish, I would say, of the first movie. There is no Wilson Fisk in this movie in Across the Spider-Verse. There is no lady doc. There's no female doc oc or even male doc oc in this movie. But it does seem like it's definitely family bait. Like it seems like it's more about the parents trying to let go of Miguel. Miguel trying to grow up as his own person. 
You know, they're trying to get him into a college. And Miguel's like flying all over the city trying to catch these bad guys. Like he's just randomly popping up out of nowhere. You know, like he's trying to make it to a meeting that his parents have. Oh, it's okay. He'll make it in time. It's all right. He'll be, he's just a little late. And he's like texting while he's like dropping bad guys. Like, hey, I'll be there in a second. One minute, in a minute, kind of thing. And I see, you know, boom. And then we get introduced to the spot. At the beginning, you think the spot is just a nobody villain. Until the spot learns what he can actually do. That is scary. Once the spot learns what he can do, he you understand why they chose him as, I guess, I don't want to say a co-villain in the in the first movie. Because it will be two parts across the Spider-Verse. I think the other one's called Beyond the, Beyond the Spider-Verse. Which I don't even know when that's dropping. I feel like that's dropping again this year, like in October. I could be wrong, though. I got to double, triple check that, but... In the sense of the Spider-Verse, again, we get Miguel. He gets, gets introduced to the spot. The boss like, hey, how you doing? Da, da. And then it's like at some sort, as they're fighting across all of, like, Brooklyn, it seems like they're going through different portals. Miguel's like, what is going on? They're flipping through portals. Miguel kind of traps him, but he gets out of it. The Miguel... Miguel finally makes it to his mom and dad's meeting after he traps the spot. Because I guess he's trying to go to... They're trying to get him into a, a, a college and stuff like that. And they have the meeting and stuff like that. They say Miguel's a great student, this and that. He's passing this, he's passing that. But he's getting a B in Spanish. And his mother, you know, she's a Puerto Rican mother, she's like, what? Excuse me? She snaps at him like, yo, you can... Th that makes no sense. There's no way you can be failing Spanish. Well, tell me, in her mind, she, he's failing Spanish. You know what to be. But we are poor, we speak Spanish all the time. There's no reason, like, telling he should be failing Spanish. But it's like, mom, relax. Like, chill. I got it. No problem. And then he'll get my and stuff like that. And then he sees the spot outside the window of the where the meeting room is, because he see realized that the spot got out. So like, oh, okay, cool. I'm good here. Then Miles just zips out of the room. So like that, he go finds the spot. He's like, dude, he basically is like, what is going on here? What is what is your issue? And then, again, they keep fighting through portals, and then he get, traps him again. But this time, the spot gets trapped in his own portal, if that makes any sense. Like, And then Miles like, oh, okay, he's gone. Cool. I'll just mind my business and stuff like that. And then Miguel has to get it. Then they're having a party for his father because his father is... His father is supposed to become the chief of the the police department so they kind of like have a party together miguel after he finishes fighting everybody and stuff he comes back and then um oh my god i'm linking out on like a couple things here and then he comes back to the party but again go back a little bit after he's done with the spot he goes to his room like his school room whatever He's dancing around. Oh, no, his regular house room, not school room. Because then he's just listening to music, laying in his bed and stuff. And who pulls through with a random, like, wormhole-type portal is uh, Miss Gwen. She's like, hey, Miguel. Miguel, hey, how you doing? Want to go do something? She's like, wait, what? And then she hops out of the portal, checks out his room, sees that he has multiple drawings of her. And she's like, I miss you too, Mouse. And she's basically like, you want to go out have fun? And basically, they just start swinging in everywhere. And stuff like that. But also, they realize that the spot is also... Miguel and Jessica Drew and Spider-Gwen also realize that the spot is an abnormality that's not supposed to be in other worlds. Because when the spot gets trapped into his own hole, he realizes, wait, what are these spots? And then he pops through one, he enters the Venom. He enters... The Venom movie. Yes. Yeah. I, you heard The Venom movie. It's like, wait, what? What is What is this? And he speaks to the woman from the Venom movie. Now, I haven't seen the Venom movie, but me and my boy watched the Across the Spider-Verse, and he, he jumped for joy. He's like, oh, the, the Venom. It's, it's Venom. Oh, my God. They, they, to him, like, they're basically introducing Venom. And then he pops out of that, pops back in, out of that portal, and hops into a different portal that shows the Lego Spider-Man universe. Yes, you heard it. Lego Universe. And then I was like, what? What's going on here? No, no, no. 
So because the spot's entering all these different universes, Miguel now knows about it. Jessica Drew knows about it. And Spider Gwen knows about it. And basically, it's like, oh wait, he's not. He's messing up the universe's realities because he's not supposed to be in any one of these universes. So he's basically what happened in the first movie when like all the Spider People, Spider Noir, Spider Gwen, you know, Spider Ham, and uh, Spider B, Peter B. Parker comes into Miles' universe. He the spot's not supposed to be in the universe. So now they send spider going to go to handle the spot but not knowing that she was going to ho- go hang out with me get go hang out with miles real quick because it was in his universe you're like oh but she got in trouble for it later on in the movie but also miles didn't know that was the main reason why she k- telling came to his his world his universe because she had a mission to go on is to get the spot and find him and handle it. Make sure he doesn't go anywhere else. But then the spot also realizes that these spots are actually useful for me. The more I go to different universes and I can find the collider that's not destroyed to help me become stronger. And that's literally what happens later on in the movie. He finds a collider in India. Which we'll also get to that. I know I'm jumping all over the place here. I'm sorry. He spies, He finds a collider, like from the first movie, in India, and basically gets powered up by that, and he literally sees every universe possible. And for some reason, Miles also sees a universe that sees um, um, the spider from Spider-Man India's character. He has a girlfriend, and her father's like the sheriff. So basically, it seems like every police chief in, sorry about that. Every police chief in each universe has to die for some reason. That the most important person in each character's lives, which seems it's a police chief in this movie, has to die for each person to be their own Spider-Man. But that's why I go back to the Spider Gwen thing earlier when she finds out her dad quit being. That's why, because tell me, her dad should have died, but because he didn't become a police chief, he didn't die. So it doesn't affect her universe the way it does uh, everybody else's almost. Like, obviously, we know almost every superhero story, I feel like, to become the best version of yourself, either you become a supervillain or you become a superhero because someone has died in your life. But back to the Spider India thing, I know it was somewhere else at some point. Oh, yeah, then Miguel finds out. Let's do this first. Obviously, that. Spider Gwen was technically only there because she, Miguel told her to go there to handle the spot. Miguel kind of like feels she's lying about something. Also, Miguel's mother feels like Miguel's lying about something. Because if you know most Latin mothers, hardcore I feel Latin mothers, they're not, I don't want to say they're not big on it. I mean, nowadays it feels completely different, but I feel like back in the heyday, OG Spanish moms, Latin moms, were not big on their sons dating light-skinned women, so to speak, white women. You know what I'm saying? That's back in the heyday, though. Nowadays, for the most part, I think that's changed. I, I believe that's changed because I'm married to one, so to speak. But Miles' mother's like, there's a scene where Miles' mother's like, Listen, I love you. I understand you're growing up, but you're still my little boy. And I will always hold you to my heart no matter where you go. But I know you as a little boy needs to grow up and be your own person. But always make, always take care of that little boy. I know that's inside of you. And basically, that's Miguel's mother of saying, I release you to the world. Do what you need to do, but also be careful about that person inside of you. And make sure nobody takes advantage of you. Don't let nobody tell you what your story, your life story is supposed to be. Which I think is probably the best thing anyone could ever say. Don't let somebody control who you are. Don't let somebody take advantage of you in any shape, way, or form. Which is the greatest thing any parent can teach you. I feel, Or even any person that you feel is high value to you. You know? But again, Miguel finds out that... Spider Gwen was only there for the dot 
the spot. And then Jessica Jewel keeps hitting up Spidey Gwen, like, oh, did you take care of the business? Did you take care of what you're supposed to take care of? It's like, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. And then, again, she doesn't work on it. And they find out Miguel, I mean, Miles was actually in the room. Because Miles, if you forget, he can turn invincible. They find out that Miles was basically following uh, Gwen around. I mean, Gwen didn't, it's like, she sensed it, but she didn't see him there. Because she felt bad that she had to lie to him. Because telling she wasn't really there to see him. No, she she went out of her way to see him. Because probably just to kill some time, but she wasn't supposed to. Hence, when Miles kind of, when Gwen was supposed to, she went to India which I don't want to mess this character's name. Pavitar Parika, some I feel like I'm butchering that his name, but Spider-Man from India was supposed to meet up with Gwen to try to catch the spot because all the spots in India, like I said earlier. But what Gwen didn't know was uh, Miles snuck in through her time portal and basically landed in India. And yo, the way they draw India in this awesome movie, animation-wise, is so beautiful. But also, Spider-Man India is hilarious. He's like, let me take you a tour of my, my country. Uh, here's this. Here's this. Here's where the British kind of took control of us. But here's traffic. And here's more traffic. Oh, and here's more traffic. Oh, and this is where the British kind of took us over. I'm like, oh, shoot. Little, little shot, you know, and pow, pow, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, they all meet and stuff like that. They give they give a quick shout to um, Hobie, or Hobart, Spider Punk. That's the British, but we'll get to that soon enough. And then again, uh, the spot finds the collider in India. Oh, like oh, he gets souped up. But then, again, this is where we meet Spider-Punk because the spot created, like, this force field that Miguel couldn't get out of, couldn't get through. He was trying to use his powers, his electric powers. But Spider-Punk basically came out of nowhere, just went with his gun and just bursted right through the, the force field. Spider-Punk was basically to, Miguel, to Miles. I keep saying Miguel. To Miles. Don't use your fingers, man. Use your hands. And then, basically, and then they, can't, they didn't take down the spot, but the spot... It was already too late because he already took what he needed to make himself stronger. And he basically just disappeared out of nowhere. They're like, oh, this is not good. This is not good. And then that's when India, Spider-Man India's universe, started getting messed up. Because, one, Miles is not supposed to be there. Miles was not. Part of the whole story, essentially, is Miles is not meant to be in Spider-India. I mean, in India, helping Gwen and um, Spider-Man India. He's still supposed to be at home. So he basically hijacked the whole thing. And they were like, and then the whole world was kind of getting messed up. Think buildings were falling. Things were tipping over. The whole, uh, like, reality distortion started happening to Miles. And then Miles got, like, a quick little, um, like, vision. One between um, Chief Singh and his dad back and forth because you don't realize what that means until later like probably like 20 maybe 30 minutes later on in the movie well basically spider-man india um spider punk uh gwen and miles help save a whole bunch of people from a bridge from falling and spider uh miles saves professor i mean chief singh which is spider-man india's girlfriend's father which is so cool. And it's funny because Spider-Man India hugs Chief Singh. Even though they don't know that he is Spider-Man. And he, his girlfriend was also on one of the buses on the bridge that was falling. And once she gets saved, he hugs her too. Like, oh, dude. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm glad you're saved. Like, he was pretending like he didn't know her. You know, obviously he knows her. She doesn't know who he is. Also, I like the fact we don't really see Spider-Man India's face. Which is cool. Spider-Man India is definitely like a light-hearted character that's fun to watch. It's like being Spider-Man's easy. You just swing the boys, save people, do this, do that. You know, no problems. 
it's actually it just seems like Spider Man didn't have no issues becoming Spider Man. He just his life was easier than cake until this whole big situation happened. And and during that scene about the bridge again destroyed, Miles wants to save Chief Singh. Gwen was trying to stop him. Now Miles thought Gwen was trying to save him. Until later on, we find out Gwen wasn't trying to save him. She was trying to stop him because Chief Singh needed to die. Now we go fast forward a little bit to the part where we find out Miguel's father now has to die because he saved Chief Singh. That was part of his little like premonition thing that he had. Dissertation prem. This this tortation, reality dissertation. I know I'm butchering that word. Um, thing that he had, like he saw the future, but yet was still in the present. So because he saved Chief Singh, now his father, which is supposed to be sworn in as chief, at some point in the movie, will tell him I'm gonna be real. It's not gonna happen until probably part two of this whole. Across the Spider Verse, Last Beyond the Spider Verse movie series thing here. It won't happen until movie two because it cuts off at a certain part. Um, Miles' dad is supposed to die essentially. So we fast forward a little bit. We let's go back a little bit after this whole India thing happened. We go. Miguel's like, I mean, Gwen's like, Miguel, you gotta come with me. So they go to the Spider Society, which you see. Every single Spider-Man probably ever created. And probably some that was just created for the movie. You see Superior Spider-Man. You see Spider-Man 299. Obviously. You see uh, Spider-Ham a little bit in there. You see, uh, again, the little female. The f little Asian girl with the spider robot. You see Dino Spider. You see Spider-Cat. You see Spider-Horse. <laughs> you see any Spider-Man you could probably think of that you've ever read or seen in a cartoon. It's in this spider society situation, and Miguel's like, "Whoa, I didn't know there was this many Spider Man." And then we got introduced back again to Peter B. Parker, the other Sp the Spider Man from the first movie, and we learn he had a baby, May Day Parker, which May Day Parker becomes her own self Spider person later on in comics, in the future of comics and stuff like that. But as they're walking, he's seeing all these spider people. What do we see? Like all the things that like have been. So Miguel has found things that are ruining reality and he's trapped them in like a little hallway kind of thing. And who do we see? Who do we see? My guy, we see Childish Gambino. I forgot his first name and I'm annoyed that I literally forgot his first freaking name oh my god why did i forget his name daniel donald glover thank you thank you donald glover i didn't have to finish the damn type it just popped up right there we find donald glover entrapped in this like like same thing happened with gwen's father it's like force field kind of thing dome force field thing in the prowler fucking suit so boom, we got already the Venom universe, and this is a uh, Venom from the Venom movies, the Tom Hardy movies, and then we get Donald Glover in a Prowler outfit from um, the first Tom Holland movie, um, Spider-Man: Homecoming. So boom, you just connected two universes in this movie. All right, so we keep going, we keep going, we keep going, we keep going. Walk down the hall. They finally meet Miguel O'Hara. Miles finally meets Miguel O'Hara. And they basically start talking. Miguel says, hey, yo, what's going on, man? I like this place. This place is pretty cool. It's like that. It's as he, Miguel breaks it down that you cannot be here. You're not meant to be here. You're not meant to be Spider-Man. In your universe, that spider, that spider that bit you was meant for another universe. Universe 42. But somehow it answered your universe and it bit you. But in all reality, you are not meant to be Spider-Man. You got lucky. But because you're Spider-Man, realities also have me have been disformed, have been messed up to some degree. And Miguel says, well, Miguel's like, how do you know this? He's because, ah, uh, my family died. Or, or was it 
I'm trying to remember. It was his, because his family died in his universe or because he didn't have a family and he wanted one. So he went to a, he went to Peter, I'm assuming he went to Peter B. Parker's universe to create a family. I'm trying to remember. His family died then, right? I think Spider Man 2099's family died in 2099. And he felt sad and he learned that there's an, he has another f- family in a different universe. And their father just died. Their Miguel O'Hara died. So he was like, let me go over there and become that little girl's father. It's almost the same thing. He felt right. But because he did that, he messed that universe's Peter, I'm assuming Peter B. Parker's universe up. So that's why Miguel knew about it what like it's going on around all the universe so essentially once and then basically his little girl died in that universe so basically miguel's whole point of everything was to try to get everything put back to each universe to make everything seem correct to put everything back to normal so i think his mindset was like hopefully this will fix the universe enough that i can get my child back or i can get my family back kind of thing and that's why he's like Miguel you're the re-. basically he's playing Ma- Miguel blames Miles for everything going right you know telling I don't think it's really Miles' fault things happen the way they happened what's the likelihood of him entering the sewer and a spider biting you that's radioactive you don't know that and it's funny because in the first movie the spider has the number 42 on it but me I'm not, I wasn't thinking about like the universe I was just thinking oh just a, a number they put on the spider to randomly like number all the spiders. That's what I thought about until he, this because the spider was like, oh, that makes sense now. Okay, you know. So essentially, then we start finding Miguel also breaks down like every spider person, someone has to die in their life. One, it seems like it's ha- two people at least have to die in your life for them to be who they are, to feel the feelings that they feel and become. Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, Spider-Animal, Spider-Person, whatever. Stuff like that. But because you... Miguel's telling Miles, because you say Chief Singh, now your father has to die as soon as he becomes Chief. Right? So I was like, oh, Miguel's like, wait, what are you talking about? No, that, that's... You cannot do that. That's not what... Being a Spider-Man is supposed to... We should be able to save him. How do I save him? And Miguel's like, you can't. You have to let it be. You have to stay here until this happens. Miguel's like, no, man. I'm not doing that. And then Miguel starts running. I think he steals a wristlet from somebody. And literally every spider character in that part of the movie, the Spider Society building, universe, whatever, Spider-Verse, whatever, Lily goes after Miles. It's funny because then Miguel also does like, does like a page. Like every spider person, Spider-Man, Chase after Miles Morales. Chase after Spider Man. It's funny because they do the whole meme, pointing meme to each other. Like you, 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 you. It was actually very funny. <laughs> it was very actually funny. And then it was like, no, Miles Spider Man, Miles Spider Man. And then they all chase after him. Every animal, every character, every being of spider creature, person, thing, whatever. Chases after Miles, and then Gwen and Spider and uh, Peter B. Parker like, this is not what we discussed. This is not what we planned. But what also is messed up that Gwen and Peter B. Parker knew that Miles Tenley was not supposed to be Spider Man. He got lucky. I think that's why somehow they all kind of got into his world in the first movie by accident. But again, everybody chases Miles. They're like that. Miguel catches up to Miles. And Miles like, I'm going to just... Basically, Miles... Miguel is like, I'm going to destroy you. Miguel chases after Miles. He's like, I'm going to destroy you. So you never created this kind of thing like that. And Miguel's... And Miles like, no. You know what? You're not going to tell me how my... Well, he's like, why is everybody trying to tell me how I'm supposed to be? Where I'm supposed to be? You don't create my future. I create my future. And he like shocks Miguel out of existence, not of existence, but like down, like they're going up a train or a portal, I'm not sure what it was, and Miles like jumps off of it and basically teleports himself into, 
I'm assuming what is Universe 42. Because Miles like goes to his house, tries to find his dad. He's like, where's dad? Where's dad? Where's dad? We'll get back to certain things in a second. And his mom's like, oh, he's outside doing this cop thing, whatever. Oh, no. No, not where his dad. Tell me. So, okay. Let me rewind just a little bit here. He enters his house. And basically, he's like, Miles, what are you doing here? His mother comes to his room. He's like, Miles, what are you doing here? You can already tell. It's I didn't think about it until now. His room's different than it is in his actual universe. Completely different. Miles, what's wrong? What's going on? And then, Mom, I got something to tell you. I know you know I, I know you know I've been lying to you, so I'm gonna tell you here right now. I'm Spider Man. I mean, his mom's like, "What's a Spider Man?" It's like, wait, what? 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 What do you mean? What's this? What's this? His mom's like thinking, "You're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. There's no such thing as a Spider Man." Like that. I was like, what? And then Miguel asks his mom, "What's that? What's that? What's that?" And then his mom kind of breaks that, not breaks down, but basically was like. Listen, my God, I don't need this crazy stuff right now. It's enough taking care of you and myself. So th- this, whatever you're doing, needs to stop, whatever. And then Miles like, what, wait, what? What do you mean? And later, about five or six minutes later, we find out Miguel's father died in this universe. I mean, not Miguel. I keep the, too many M's right now. Sorry. Miles' father died in universe 42. So I was like, oh, it's not. Wait, what? So then comes in Uncle Aaron, which is alive in this universe. And basically, I guess Uncle Aaron watches Miles as he, um, as his mother goes to work. Like, get in a while to care of him. And Miguel's like, I mean, Miles is like, I mean, Aaron, Uncle Aaron's like, all right, let's go, man. Let's go to do da 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 da, do whatever. And then as soon as they're out of his mother's, like, vision or hearing, Aaron's like, oh, no, this is happening at this time, right? All right, cool, whatever. And I guess they go to, like, a secret spot. And then, basically, essentially, we find out Uncle Aaron isn't the prowler in this movie. Miles is the prowler in this movie. And I'm not going to lie, his outfit is actually kind of dope. Way better than, like, what we saw in the first one from Uncle Aaron. And Miguel's like, I mean, Miles is like, wait, what? How are you? How are you? Your father died. Why are you like a bad guy and stuff like that? And like, it seems like the Beyond uh, Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse is going to be a fight between uh, the Prowler Miles Morales and Spider-Man Miles Morales and also trying to defeat the spot all at the same time. Because my guess is this movie will be like uh the second the next movie will essentially Miguel will realize what he's done wrong and he will help them defeat the spot and stuff like that but as we like getting cut into this uh Peter B Parker and Gwen realize yo this is wrong what they're doing to him and stuff like that so I got to go help him and what Gwen realizes is oh wait I, he's in a different universe. And in the way she sensed that he was not in that universe. She's like, oh, wait, he's in a whole different universe. I got to go rescue him. So she literally was like, huh. Now, if you remember earlier, I said, oh, her dad quit his job. And then he also, f- once, and then Gwen comes back home and stuff like that. And once Gwen finds out that he quit his job, his dad is like, her dad is like, oh, and some weird spider guy came here to drop something off for you. I hope he's nicer. I hope he's and he's nice or something like that. I can't remember exactly the, the words he said. He gives her a box, almost like a gift. And it says, I hope this is useful to you, Hobie. Now, Hobie is like a renegade. He doesn't believe in this political, like, listen to people stuff. He runs his own thing. He's his own person kind of character. So, essentially, because of Hobie, Spider-Punk... Gwen is able to go back, go to all the old universes from the first movie. And what do we see at the end of the movie? She collects Spider-Ham, collects Hobie again, brings back uh, Peter B. Parker, Spider-Noir, and the little Asian girl from the first movie. 
you're like, oh, snap. They're about to. So it seems like it's going to be also again, the whole Spire Society versus Miguel, Miles. I mean, that's what that's the vibe I'm getting here. It's like three different storylines happening in this whole situation. And I think it's awesome. And then when the movie just cuts out. That's all That's all you get. At least that's what all I got. I, I don't know. But to me, this movie was phenomenal. Oh, also, jeez. So when we go back a little bit. I know I, there's more spoilers. We go back a little bit. When Miguel's explaining to Miles about every Spider-Man has to have a person die in their life. Right? You see who... You see the Andrew Garfield when his Uncle Ben dies. You see that Uncle Ben and Andrew Garfield, like a little spot bubble and stuff like that. So, boom, you just connected. And the way they went backwards when connecting things, which I think it was kind of cool. You just connected Venom. Check. You connected um, Tom Holland with uh, Daniel Donald Glover as the Prowler. Check. You connected... And you go for the Spider-Man when Uncle Ben dies in his timeline. Check. Excuse me. Sorry. And then now, I think, if I remember how, you see Tobey Maguire basically talking to his grandfather, his Uncle Ben, like, kind of like the whole responsibility, saying this is the person that was most important in Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man's life in that movie kind of thing. But... The fact that they kind of went backwards on it, because it was, if you know it, so Maguire Spider Man came first, then Andrew Garfield Spider Man, then Tom Holland Spider Man, then the Venom, Tom Hardy stuff. There's a lot of Toms. But, anyways, back to my point. So they literally connected all that stuff, plus connected so many other Spider Man. The fact that they even did Lego Spider Man is awesome to me. How? I feel like Lego Spider Man is going to play some sort of part in. The, set, the next movie, I don't know how, but it'll be awesome. Because this movie had three directors from what I know. Because all this, literally, it's like 800 animation styles. Graphically animation. Visually, this was a beautiful movie. Beautiful storytelling. Beautiful everything. The fact... Again, they connected all these Spider-Man universes into essentially one animated universe. Now, what if the next Tom Holland movie, we get animated Miles in Tom Holland's movie? Now, I know people will be like, that's stupid. But why can't we? Like, Lily, we have the properties to do it. They have the properties to do it. Or if Miles comes through Tom Holland's... C- comes into Tom Holland's universe... As Miles Morales already, but it's he be instead of staying animated, he becomes live action. You know what I'm saying? Like that would be so dope. That would be so rad. Again, if you give this out of five, four point eight. Out of ten, nine points eight. You know what I mean? I the only the only point reason I'm giving the point, I kinda wish it was a post credit scene. Or even a mid credit scene. That's the only the point eight is there. Besides that, to me, this movie is like almost flawless, almost perfect. You know what I mean? Like it's beautiful, it's awesomely done. Um, yeah, man. I, I I don't know what else to say about this movie. It's fact that I loved it, I enjoyed it. It was one of the best movies I've seen, animated wise. Do I want to say since Mario, Super Mario movie? It's up there with Super Mario movie that came out a couple months ago because i mean yes they're both visually different animation styles crazy different but just the fact oh i'm about to put miles up there i'm about to put spider-man cross spider us up there dude because dude it's just perfect just perfect um but yeah that's that's the end of this man i don't know what else to to say I'm sorry for the background. That's my uh, that's my son, yapping away like he does, you know. But again, thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all. Hit that like button on Twitter. Hit that retweet on Twitter at Mellopod22. You know, y'all know what it is. Hit that Mellopod, the Mellow Podcast on Facebook, because you know how it goes. 
I need to get back on Twitch. I need to get back on my YouTube stuff. But also, if you want to hit, check me out on Twitch, I'm at twitch.tv slash mellowfellowgaming. One word, no spaces. You know how it goes. And until next time, people, I will see you. Love you. Always and forever. One love. Peace.